hello, can you hear me okay? I gotta get some, ooh, that was loud, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm coming on in a second. Just give me a moment. Um, here we go, and hello, can you hear me okay? Sorry, friends, I'm going to put the, um, the files into the chat in just a moment. So, yeah, meanwhile, can you hear me all right? Let me know if you can hear me okay. Hi, Rico. Let me get my camera turned on here. Um, Yeah, that's a little bit better. Hi, can you hear me all right? Um, I'm gonna move this thing over here. I'm gonna move you guys over here. <laughs> hey, Gozia, good to see you. I need to give you guys some files. I'm sorry, I was talking to my neighbor and we were discussing the election. I've got a, mon a bunch of, uh... okay, that was weird. I've got a bunch of files for you guys, so. Um, just hang out with me for a moment while I throw those in. Um, great, thanks, Reiko. So our files are actually from um, these stock websites, and I'm going to um, put those into our description, okay? Here are the work along files. They're from stock websites, and therefore I would prefer if you downloaded those directly. Okay. Um, all right, save. And I'm gonna put those into um, Google Drive as well. So you can download them from the links I've provided, um, but I'm also making a folder for you guys on my Google Drive. Okay. So yeah, if you could um, in the chat, just mention to me if you've tried to do um, Photoshop collage before. That would be great for me to know. And if there were any questions that came up while you were working on digital, this is insane, sorry. Um, if there were any questions that came up while you were working on digital collage, that would be good to know because it can be a little bit tricky. And you do have to have some knowledge of, um, you do have to have some knowledge of your Photoshop selection tools and things like that. And if you don't have knowledge of Photoshop selection tools, it can get, um, or even if you do, it, there are plenty of challenges that can come up. So yeah, if there were any of you have had experience with the, uh, the process of making digital collage and you're like, oh, this was fussy. I don't know what I was doing. I ran into this problem or that. Just type it into the chat what those problems might have been and I can do my best to answer them, okay? And I'm gonna make us a bit link that I'll just throw into the chat for us too, okay? So just hang on. You don't have to download those files that I put into the description just yet. I'm gonna give you a bit link in our uh, YouTube chat so that we can all kind of have the same stuff. Okay, copy, and here we go. Fabulous. All right, so there's the bit link. It's in the chat, and you can download the files from there. These are from websites um, Life of Pics, and oops, I did not mean to put that one in there. Remove. Okay. These are from the websites Life of Pix and Pexels, both of which are like free stock footage websites. Not only royalty free, but you can use the footage themselves without any issue, okay? All right, so there we go. And let me put that also into our this thing. 
Okay, now I'm officially getting started, shall we? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kalika. I'm a motion designer and character animator in the New York City area, and I'm gonna show you how to make a Photoshop digital collage. It's gonna be a nice, moody Photoshop digital collage, very similar to what you see here. And what you see here, we've got a number of different very large layers that have been put in. This is an animation ready file, which I did actually do a live stream a few weeks ago where I showed the process of animating it. However, my, my little computer that could did not manage to stay um, current with the stream and there were a lot of dropouts and so I'm going to do it over again next Tuesday sorry next Monday night um but yeah this is the design tutorial we're going to be working with Photoshop and it assumes that you have some basic working knowledge of Photoshop at the very least you know how to um bring files in using copy paste you understand how to use the tabs you understand how to use the layer menu uh, sorry, the layers window um, and the basic functions therein, and you understand a little bit of how to use these different kinds of blending modes to combine layers. Now, if you're not familiar with selection tools, I would highly recommend that you check out my tutorial on selection tools that aired several weeks ago as of this air date. Um, it goes through all the different selection tools. I also have a pretty handy tutorial on channel selection. And if you're not signed up for my mailing list yet, please do so. The link is in the description and I send out reminders every time I do a new live stream and the current schedule is every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So this is the finished collage and the reason why I have this ending on it let me just, whoops, um, it says collage underscore anim. That means that that's code for me to know that this is the uh, animation ready file. And my zoomy zoom isn't working, unfortunately. So yeah, it says collage underscore anim. And that just means that it is the animation ready file. Hey, Anthony, welcome. So um, I have some friends who are joining me today on the live stream. They are in the chat, Reiko, Gozia, Anthony, and if anybody else wants to say hi, just type it into the chat, I'll say hi back. And if you have questions as you're working, this is really important, friends. If you have questions while you're working, please type those questions into the chat, or if you're watching the replay, into the comments as soon as they come into your head, especially if you're watching the live stream because there is a delay. There's a delay between when I say something and you get to hear it, and that can be anywhere between like 10 and 45 seconds. I'm not making this up. So if you run into problems, questions, if I do something and the reason why I do it doesn't make total sense to you, I recommend that you just go ahead and type that in and I'll do my best to clarify. Worst case, if it still doesn't make sense by the end of the tutorial, I can always meet with you for a brief one-on-one -on -one to talk you through it. I really don't mind doing that. Um, teaching is my passion. I love teaching people what I know. Um, and I love seeing the things that spark from them. So if you make something that's inspired by this tutorial, I encourage you to post that on Instagram and use the, um, like use the hashtag, I guess, or the at Kalika FX. That's my code name for all of things Kalika animation related. And this way people know where to find out how to do similar stuff themselves. All right, awesome. So let me first deconstruct the finished version so that you understand what all the component parts are. So first of all, we have this fence and the fence is a layer. Then we have this sticker. We have this texture thing. We have this hole. Now the hole originated as this uh, like very moody sort of image. And if you wanna play along, I encourage you to. In the description, there is a bit link. Um, also in the chat, there's a bit link. You can just click on that, download the files, and you'll be ready to go. So there's this hole, there's a shadow under the hole. It's an illusion. And then um, we have this lady with her corresponding layer mask. And then we have this beach scene 
which looks a bit like that. And it's also got a layer mask. And then we have this paint texture and then we have our background. Now I'm gonna keep this file open. I'm actually gonna revert it to go back to the original version that I had saved. So that way we can just keep checking back and like, oh, how is this set up and what was the opacity and so on. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is make a brand new empty file by going to the file menu and going to new. And if I go to film and video, for this particular file, because there aren't going to be any pans or zooms or anything like that, things are just sort of gonna show up. Um, they're either gonna pop on or slide on. I'm gonna just keep it at HDTV. So in case if you haven't caught on yet, I'm gonna animate this. And I actually did animate it a few weeks ago, but there are a lot of dropouts in the playback. So I'm gonna do it over again next week, which is um, November 8th on Monday night and that'll be at 6 p.m. Eastern. So for my new file, I go to film and video, I go to HDTV, and then I'm going to um, set my color profile down here. I'm gonna set the color profile to working RGB, sRGB. Wow, I am really not digging my color. Let me just check this here. Sorry, friends. Um, Just a second. That's as bright as I get, unfortunately. Let's see if I blast myself with more light. Now I am blowing out. Hmm. All right. Just a little nudge. One second. I just don't like myself to be the wrong. Lighting. Ooh, one more light. And let's see if that makes a difference. I definitely need to go to Ikea and get more lights here. All right. Fabulous. I'm back. So we're doing the film and video HDTV, and I set my color profile to working RGB sRGB. Okay? This way, when I work between my Adobe programs, it's always going to look really consistent. I hit create, and that's gonna create my nice empty composition. All right, so I'm gonna keep my chat open. So if you guys get stuck, you're gonna let me know. I gotta build this. I'm gonna build it from the bottom on up. And the way I'm gonna build it is by bringing in these different photos that I downloaded into this very composition. So there's a number of different ways that you can do that. I'm going to grab up from the Life of Pix folder, I have this paint file, okay? Um, and the paint file, I'm going to open it in Photoshop. So I could open it directly from my Windows Explorer or desktop just by right clicking and going to open with and choosing Photoshop. Alternatively, and I find this to be the easiest way to open these sort of files, um, is by going into the Photoshop I have open and doing file open through that. And the reason for that is that sometimes I have like multiple versions of Photoshop installed and the default opening Photoshop is not the one I'm working on. So if I do file open, I can go over to my Life of Pix folder and I can actually select all this stuff. So if you have a lighter colored beach file, delete that you don't need it but I need all this stuff it's gonna come in so I can select all that stuff at one go and hit open and it's gonna open additional tabs for it okay and don't worry I know it's like a lot to kind of keep track of we're gonna um, move the things in as we need them okay all right glorious so there's my paint and I'm gonna also bring in that cassette tape label so I'm gonna go file menu open and I'm gonna bring in from the pexels folder the tape okay great so now I have all the things and I'm gonna start with the paint and the process is pretty interesting because actually like while you could select all and copy paste I kind of prefer to just drag stuff in I'm going to show you both methods okay so first when I'm in the paint I can do select all and I can do edit copy and then I can go over to 
And if I turn off my transform control, see how there's the dancing ants going all the way around? If I go back to my untitled, I can do edit paste, and it's gonna paste that giant file right in there, okay? Now, if you're not sure what size this is in relationship to our canvas, what you can do is go over to the selection tool right here and then turn on show transform controls and you see how big this is. If I just zoom back, I can do the zoom tool, hold the alt or option key and just pull back a bunch and then go back to the selection tool. That's rather big and that's a good thing. So I can just move this by hand and I'm just trying to move it so that I have a nice sort of gradation between dark and light and I don't have any details that are gonna be distracting. Like I can already see that this little schnibble, as my friend Katie would call it, is gonna be distracting. So I'm just gonna shove that up there. Yeah, that looks better. So next, that guy's done. I'm gonna rename my layer, okay? So I'm gonna rename this paint. And every time I bring a layer into Photoshop, what I'm into my Photoshop comp, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm gonna save my file. Save as, and I'm gonna save it as a Photoshop file. So this is gonna be photo collage dash work. This way I know this is the one I'm working on. And I'm also, so I name the layer, I save the file as something, and then I also am gonna change this layer into a smart object. And smart objects are really important for what's known as a non-destructive workflow. So if you right-click this layer and you choose convert to smart object, and that's not gonna work if you right-click the thumbnail, you have to actually right-click the name of the layer. A smart object is um, basically a layer that's going to retain its original layer information, even though you might make changes to it here in Photoshop. For example, if I duplicated, let me just go back a step, okay? If I duplicate my layer, whoops, I duplicate my layer, and on the regular paint layer, I convert it to a smart object, and my duplicate, I don't, okay? So I'm gonna select both these guys, I'm gonna shrink them down. Shrink, 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 shrink. Okay, I shrunk them down quite a bit. They're like 8% of their original. You don't have to actually do this part. I'm just demonstrating for you why the smart object thing is a really good idea. Okay, so we've got our paint copy and we've got our paint, right? So I'm gonna take my paint copy and paint and now I'm like, you know what? Actually, I don't want it to be 8%. I want it to be bigger. So I go back to my edit menu. I go back to transform scale and I'm just gonna grab the corner and I don't even have to hold shift. I can just pull it bigger, bigger, bigger. Okay, and okay, eight times, I'm gonna, I'm guessing that this is gonna be big enough. Okay, so this, friends, is my smart object layer, okay? So if I have my smart object layer selected by itself and I do edit, transform, scale, it says that it's 81% of its original size. Now you may have noticed that my when I did that transformation, the number was very different. When I did that transformation, because the paint copy layer was selected as well and it's not a smart object, it showed that the scaling was a thousand. So when we look at the visibility of the paint copy layer, you see how blurry that got? And the reason why is because first we took this layer and the smart object for that matter, and we scaled them down to 8% of their original size. Then we were like, mm, actually it should be bigger. So we scaled them back to 80% of the original size. The smart object layer remembered. It remembered that, hey, this used to be such and such pixel dimensions, but the regular layer, Dude, that doesn't remember Snap. It doesn't remember anything at all about its past. So when you shrink it down to that 8%, it's throwing away 92% of your pixels because it doesn't need those in order to display at 8%. So when you make it big again, it's like, oh, I guess I will make the existing pixels bigger and you end up with a very blurry low resolution image, okay? So what we're gonna be doing for this particular project is 
non-destructive image editing. We're going to be using smart objects. We're going to be using um, layer masks. We're going to be using smart filters whenever possible and so on until we're finalized, until we're totally happy with the design, in which case we will, um, what's the word? Commit. There we go. We will commit to our layers being a particular way. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna go back a couple of steps just in case if you got lost in that whole smart object uh, discussion. And what I did was in the paint layer, I selected all and then I copied, right? Then I went back to photo collage work and I do edit paste. All right, and I'm just gonna shove that up a little bit so that it's nice and sharp. Rename it paint and right click convert to smart object. This is just a good habit to get into. And then I save. So I'm just gonna do my command or control S every time I do something notable. So the next layer, if we look at our collage animation final is what I call water thing. And water thing is at a reduced opacity, it's 29%. And it's um, rather big. So if I turn on my, sh uh, if I have my selection tool chosen and your tools might look a little different than mine, it might be that your tools are kind of in a vertical format. I prefer the two up. So just click this little fast forward button in the corner if your tools look a little different. And then um, I'm gonna get this water thing and the water thing is actually our beach. So if I go over to beach and this time I'm gonna show you how to bring this image into the other one using the, the drag drop method. So I'm gonna tear off this tab, okay? So now this tab is separate from the rest, all right? And it can be helpful to have a second monitor, so I'm just gonna sneak this over next door to my second monitor that you guys can't see. Sorry, friends. Then I'm gonna go back to my photo collage work and I'm gonna bring this back on top. Not like this where it overlaps the blue and retabs the whole situation, but like this so that I can see my beach JPEG, the layer window, and the work, uh, the canvas for my photo collage. And all we're gonna do, friends, with the beach JPEG selected, we're gonna take our background layer from the layers panel, drag and drop it over like this, okay? And now, we will have this beach JPEG layer into our canvas that we're building our layered file in. I can go back to my beach JPEG and I can just close it. I don't need it anymore. I've brought it into Photoshop. So I can rename this beach and I can right click, convert to smart and save. Now, what happens when you double click a smart object? Well, when you double click a smart object, it opens it up in its own file. So see, it's called beach.psv, okay? And that just means big Photoshop file. Uh, I think it, it actually stands for large document format, but I don't know where the, anyways. So this is our beach.psv. And if we made any changes in here, like for instance, if I just made like a, a big circle around this person, and then I went, I saved it. I did this on a new layer, right friends? And then I go back to photo collage work. You'll see that line show up, right? And if I just shove this, see, you can see that whole line. If I go back to beach PSB and I'm like, you know what, that looks dumb. Let's trash that layer. Let's resave. And then I go back to my photo collage work file. You'll see that that has disappeared. Okay, now we don't want this lady in the scene. I don't find her to be very distracting because we're gonna have a different person in the scene. So I just am gonna move this down a little bit. I'm gonna take a look in my collage NM to see like kind of how big that was. So let's just switch over to the select tool and do the transform controls. I'm just gonna zoom back to see. And it looks like it was kind of at the, um, whoops, let's just, turn off the layer mask so I can see. It seems like it was at the original size, but I just moved it sort of into the corner. All right, so I'm just gonna take this guy and with my transform control showing, I'm gonna zoom back. So zoom tool, alt click to zoom out. 
here's my beach, here's my transform tool, and I'm just gonna move this like so. Okay, so it has like kind of um, an interesting texture to it. And I'm gonna reduce the opacity, which I can do just right here. Okay, in case if you're not aware, something really cool you can do for opacity. If you're sure what opacity you want, you can just hit five for 50, six for 60, four for 40, and it doesn't even matter which number pad you're using. If you're using the number line or the number pad, you can still go incrementally in your opacity values just by using numbers. So 45 gave me 45, 30, 56 gave me 56. You can just type it in and it'll automatically adjust the opacity, which is pretty nice. So if we look over here, this guy was at 29. So if I go back here, I'll just round it to 30. So I just type three and it takes me to 30, look at that. So are there any questions on working with the smart objects and why I do it or bringing the layers into the multi-layered composition? Okay, oh, I have big news. So I um, am in the process of signing a contract for a fully um, collage style animated explainer video for a nonprofit. So I'm pretty excited about that. It'll take me through the end of the year. Um, so that's part of why I'm like so passionate about this collage thing is because it's a really um, on trend style right now. Okay, so we have our beach. That's great. I'm gonna go back and see what's the next layer. So the next layer, layer is our lady, but I'm not gonna make a mat for her yet. I'm just gonna kind of place her, you know, maybe I'll just do the hole. So the hole is based on this JPEG, which I have so aptly named hole. We're gonna use that. So I'm going to take that over to my photo collage work file. And the way we're gonna do it, um, you can choose your favorite method. You can do select all, copy and paste, or you can just do the tab removal, drag drop method. So I'm gonna do the um, select all, copy and paste. So I did select all. I'm just gonna keep going back and forth between those methods so that way you guys get comfy with both. And then back to photo collage work and paste. Okay, and if we look at our finished version, our finished version, um, if I just hold the alt key and click on the eyeball, I can see that layer by itself. And I can see that like the kind of lighter section is down toward the bottom. It's darker over here. There are these two little stripey guys. I can do alt click again and it's gonna show everything once more. So that's kind of like Photoshop's answer to the solo switch that we know and love from After Effects. Um, I'm quite a fan. So here we go. So that looks like it needs to be rotated and whatnot. So I'm gonna rename this hole. And I'm gonna right click, convert to smart, save, and rotate. So um, I can go to the edit menu and choose free transform, or I can simply do control or command T. And that brings up my transformations. And if I rotate, and I wanna rotate like 15 degrees at a time, I can hold the shift key down. And there's negative 15, there's negative 45, 60, 75, 90. Ah, there we go. It took a moment. All right, so I'm just gonna move this like so, okay? Because I want it to be kind of on the third. Now, for those of you who have maybe studied some graphic design or some cinematography or photography, you might be familiar with the rule of thirds. I'm a big fan. And if you wanna be precise about your rule of thirds, what you can always do is bring up some guides. So I'm gonna go to the view menu and I'm gonna choose new guide layout in order for us to get some guides up. Now these guides are god awful, like what is going on here? I'm gonna clear my existing guides and I'm gonna do three columns three rows, and I'm gonna turn off any uh, gutter or margins that might be there, okay? And now I can see that that circle is pretty much on the third. So that I don't accidentally move my guides, I'm also gonna go to view lock guides. This way they don't actually move by accident. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna move it a little bit like so, and there we go, we have this whole thing, okay? My children are screaming, I apologize. Okay, just a moment. So here is our whole layer. 
and it's got this interesting texture in the foreground but it has this like sketch of a woman in it we don't want that woman we want a different woman so we're going to do a couple of things in order to hide this woman and introduce our other woman so let's take a look at how that was set up so it looks like there's a layer mask and with layer masks the area that's white is the area that you're actually seeing and the area that's black is the area that's being hidden okay um, and again if you guys have any questions at all please just go ahead and type them into the chat um, and if you're getting stuck or lost that would be really great um, just to type in your questions like that okay all right very good so here is this layer and it looks like I have a blending mode on it of color burn and I have this layer mask happening okay so let's figure that out let's go back to our work file and let's mess with that we can hide our guides just by going to view um, hide guides where are you hide guides show guides so you can hide your guides really easily with control or command semicolon so now they're just hiding temporarily. And what we want is to like get rid of this woman that's in here so we can put our own person in there. I'm gonna switch over to the elliptical marquee and hold the shift key down to keep it at a one-to-one -one ratio. And this can be a little bit fussy, so just have some patience with yourself and you can you can always do a couple of things to kind of make your life a little easier. I'm going to show you, okay? So if you're having trouble getting just the right size, what you can do is make a brand new layer on top and then just fill this with white, okay? So I'm going to create um, black and white over in my color chips just by hitting the D key on my keyboard. That sets it to my default colors. If I hit the X key on my keyboard, it's going to swap my foreground and my background. So now my foreground color is white. Then on this layer, I'm gonna do edit menu fill. Those of you who've had me in class would know that I detest the paint bucket. It is the worst. It's just really difficult to get a nice clean anything using the paint bucket. So I much prefer edit fill. So I do edit fill and under fill, I can just keep it at foreground color and 100% opacity. And remember, I'm doing this on a separate layer, okay? And I'm doing it on that separate layer just so that I have control over the size of it and so it's not actually messing with my original. I hit okay and now I have my circle. Select menu, deselect. And if you need help with this or if you're getting lost or what have you, just let me know and I'll be happy to fix, okay? I'll be happy to backtrack or um, repeat whatever you need. And one, uh, one way of doing things that I quite appreciate is when somebody gets lost, if they're like, yeah, so I know you explained it, but can you explain it a different way? Happy to do that as well. So what we can do here, friends, is we can reduce the opacity. Okay, this way we can see what we're doing a little bit better. And then we can transform the size of this circle so that it fits comfortably inside of this inner ring. So what do I mean by this inner ring? I mean this like this silver edged ring that's going all the way around because we're gonna make our own shadow. So what we're gonna do is take that reduced opacity circle and I'm gonna go to edit menu, transform scale and I'm gonna reduce the size of the circle. If I just pull it and you're in an older version of Photoshop, it's not going to keep it proportional. But if, you're, um, if you are in an older version of Photoshop, just hold the shift key down and that'll keep it proportional. If you're in one of the more recent versions of Photoshop and you hold the shift key, it actually does the opposite of what you would want. It actually changes your dimensions um, disproportionately. So instead of having a perfect circle, you will end up with an ellipse or an egg shape. So that's not good. So just pull it if you're in uh, Photoshop version 2020, 2020 or higher. Yeah. Okay. And when it comes to selection tools, friends, you always want to select a little bit more than you need. If you're like 
erasing something. So imagine I'm like erasing between fingers. I want to erase a little bit extra because otherwise you end up with an edge. So I've aligned this circle really nicely now. I'm happy with it. I'm going to commit. And then I'm going to raise that opacity once more and use that as a guide to make my cutout. So to select the contents of this layer, and it's gotta be 100%, you can hold the Command or Control key, Command on a Mac, Control on PC, um, just on that layer thumbnail. And you see this little like selecty button that shows up. Let's see if my Zoomy Zoom works. Yeah, so if I hold the Control, whoops, if I hold the Control key down, it gives me this little selection box next to the hand and when I click that look what happens it gives me the little dancing ants around the edge of what I've selected so that's a good thing so let me get out of the zoomy zoom and here we go so I'm gonna go back to the hole but we don't want to just delete you first of all you can't do that when you're working with smart objects and second of all we're doing non-destructive image editing remember so what I gotta do is go over here where we have our layer mask button and um, this guy down below. So next to where it says FX, there's this little like, looks like a fake camera, but it's actually a rectangle with a circle in the middle. And that's what we're gonna do here. So let me just make this bigger. Yeah, it's this guy right here, okay? And so if I click on that, it's only going to show me that circle. Whoops. So we actually need to invert our mat. So it's going to show us what was outside the circle and hide what was inside the circle. So to get into that layer mask, you can hold the Alt or Option key. That'll dive you into it. And then making sure that nothing is selected, so make sure you're on deselect, just do Command I, which is the um, hotkey for invert. I'm on a PC, so it would be Control I. So com Command or Control I. And that inverts your foreground and background. And because we're just working with white and black, it just flops white for black. And now we have our hole and it's perfect and we're so happy with that. Okay, now what do we do about this edge here? This edge is kind of gnarly. I want it to actually be gnarly. I want it to be sort of rough around. Um, and I'm gonna do that with a soft brush. So I'm gonna switch over to the paint brush tool, B for brush. And in my layer mask, I'm gonna start painting. Now if you're in your smart object, you're not gonna be able to paint. That's one disadvantage of working with the smart object is you can't paint on the layer smart object itself. You have to actually go into it or make a separate layer. We're gonna do the mask though. So I'm gonna to go to layer mask. I have my paint brush and I'm gonna set it to, from this little selecty guy, whoops, there we go. This little downward facing arrow next to the brush name. Um, we are not working again. So next to the brush name, I click that. I'm gonna go over to general brushes and I'm gonna choose the soft round brush. Now, if you have a Wacom tablet, this is the perfect time for you to use it. Um, I don't have my, do I? Nope, I don't have my Wacom tablet installed at the moment, but that's okay. I'm just gonna do it by hand. So I'm gonna make sure that my paint brush mode is set to normal. Make sure my color is set to black and I'm gonna make this bigger and give it a flow of 100%, okay? So I'm just adjusting these little choices up at the top. We've got our, zoomy zoom, we've got our opacity and we've got our flow. I'm setting both of those to 100, even though my size is set to 30 and my hardness, I don't know if I wanna do a 0% hardness, but maybe like around 30. And I wanna make it bigger. So an easy, easy way to make your brushes bigger and smaller is to use the brackets to the right of letter P on your keyboard. So I can just click that big bracket and there we go. And then I can click and paint in here to get rid of that hard edge a little bit. 
Okay, and the cool thing about using layer masks and painting on the layer masks is you can always hit X to swap foreground and background and then come back in here and bring back different parts that you are missing. Okay, so I'm just doing a little of that. And then I like to check my work. So I'll do a little alt click into my layer mask and then just continue to paint that if it's like not as clean as I wish. Now in my um, original comp here, I had put this on color burn. And these um, blending modes, as they're called, are really quite wonderful in order to figure out how your layers are gonna interact with each other. So if I come up here and I choose color burn, you see how that like blends it together? And there is some, there's some color math involved here, but all you need to know is that it looks nice. So you're happy with it. And let's look back at our original and it looks like this is too dark. So what we can do is we can actually mess with our contrast of this image a little bit to get it to look a little bit softer, maybe a little bit less harsh. Okay, if I click here, I can see that this is at 100% and it's color burn, but I may have in my original process made the, the levels a little bit lighter. So let's mess with this a bit, shall we? I can reduce the opacity a bit, but that's not really doing the job. But if I do image adjustments levels, which is one of my favorites, I can just come in here and making sure that I have the smart object selected. Um, again, image adjust levels, I can mess with my distribution of pixels. So the histogram in levels, if you haven't used it before, is really quite wonderful. It's showing you um, where all of your pixel values are located and it shows you black, middle, and gray. I'm gonna reset this. If you just hold the Alt or Option key and click on Cancel, it changes to Reset. Look at that. And so this is our original distribution of pixels. We have a couple of, pic a couple of uh, areas that are very, very black. We have, um, well, sorry, we have a bunch of areas that are very, very black, and then it drops, and there's like not very much in the gray to black, uh, sorry, black to gray area um, until like here, and then the gray to white area is here. So if I just take that gray, which nerds in the know refer to as gamma, if I drag that to the left, you're gonna see that the whole image starts to get lighter, and that's actually a really good thing in this case. Now, because this is a smart object, we can always go back into our levels and change our minds about it. So I do that, I hit OK, and look, there's what's called a smart filter. I can do a little before and after on that, and if I want to make further changes to my levels, I could just double click on the levels, and there I am again with the levels, and it has the same values as when I changed it. Whereas if I did the levels on an ordinary layer that wasn't a smart object, it wouldn't remember what I had done. It would have thrown out those pixel values I wasn't using and I would have ended up with a smaller range of colors and values to work with. So yet another reason to use smart objects. Um, okay, so does that make sense why I'm using the smart objects and how the levels thing is working? Please let me know in the chat. Um, if you need any clarification there. So that's starting to look a little bit more similar. Now, there's a couple of things missing. First of all, we're missing this lady here. We're missing our fence here, and we're missing this little bit of shrapnel and the label. So let's go back in and let's add those things. So I'm gonna grab up the lady, and the way I'm gonna grab her is by dragging her tab over, and then I'm just gonna drag and drop the background layer into here. I can close up my lady and in my comp here, I can just move this, rename it lady, and I can change that into a smart object as well. I'm gonna drop her under the hole, okay? And you see she's starting to get very, very dark. 
And that is because, friends, we need to do a few things to her in order to get her ready for the show. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tone her. We're going to give her some color. And if we go to image menu, adjustments, hue and saturation, this is one of my favorites, we can click on colorize. We can increase the saturation and just adjust the hue so that she has kind of like a, like an orangey um, tone to her, okay? Now don't worry that all our blue is going to go away because we're actually gonna isolate her a little bit using another layer mask. But I think that this is gonna work out pretty good for us. And so I'm just gonna increase the lightness as well. And I think that's gonna be pretty good. Again, because this is a smart object, I can always go back into hue and saturation and it remembers my settings and allows me to adjust further without losing any data. So I need to flip her and I need to put her in that hole and I maybe wanna adjust the size of her, but I want the hole to stay consistent. So it's a mighty good thing we made this layer here. So I'm gonna go back to this circular layer and hold the um, command or control key and click the layer thumbnail. Then I'm gonna go back to my lady layer and click my trusty uh, layer mask button. So now it's showing the lady in the hole rather than hiding her. And that's because we don't want to actually invert what is and isn't selected. Let's go back to our original and oh, look at that. She is um, clearly like not the way we want her to be. <laughs> so let's fix this. So let's go back over here. We want her to be flipped. We also probably want to adjust her um, levels a little bit so that this gets raised to white. Now, as it is, if I just take what I've got and I do a flip, it's gonna flip everything, including my mat. I don't wanna flip my mat. So if I turn off the little chain linky thing in between, it's gonna leave these as independent entities. So I could like make changes to the mat. It's not going, sorry, the mask. It's not going to affect my image. I can make changes to the image. It's not going to affect my mask. So if I take this image and I go, um, edit menu, transform, flip horizontal, look at that. My mask stayed the same. So now I can move her until, where is she? Where'd you go? There you are, lady. So there's my lady. And then I can do um, either continue to adjust my hue and saturation, which is kind of working, but you see how there's still, oops, there's still that like bright peach sort of hue so I'm just gonna do a little bit of that and then I can combine this with some levels. Now this is one of the tricky things about working with smart objects is that when you use your smart filters, it actually disables any existing smart filters for the new one. So it's a little bit of a leap of faith. So I'm gonna go edit, I'm uh, sorry, image menu, adjustments, boop, boop, boop. Sorry friends, image adjustments, levels. And then I'm going to brighten the background a little bit by just pulling that left guy over. Oh, it actually in included both, so that's not too bad. And then I can go back to levels. Let's bring the dark point in. And it's a little bit of push and pull between the dark point and this right here. And that's kind of getting there. Let's move our white so it's like a proper white. And yeah, something in there should be okay. Cool, so I'm pretty happy with that. It's not exact to what I had here, but it'll do in a pinch. Um, alternatively, what I could do, let me try turning off hue and saturation. See, like she doesn't have that flavor. Let's see if we switch the order. That didn't do anything. Um, let me try messing with levels just once more, just a touch. So I'll do a little bit of that. And then if I go to hue and saturation, see? See, this is what I was talking about. Smart filters stacked on top of this will not preview while this filter is being edited. They will be applied after committing the filter parameters dialog. So in other words, 
we're going to disable your other smart filter temporarily until you're done messing with this one. Does that make sense? Type into the chat if that doesn't make sense and you need a, a leg up. All right, so here I can actually, let's try turning off colorize. Nope, we need to colorize. And I can drop the saturation a little bit. Okay, so maybe something like that. And then I can double click on levels. All right, now we're getting somewhere. I can boost that and do a little back and forth that way. All right, I think that's good enough. I could probably mess with this some more if I wanted to, but I'm not going to at the moment. All right, so the next thing I want is that little shadow, okay? And the place where I want the shadow is where the light is hitting. I want it to be like right here. So once again, I'm gonna hold the Command or Control key and highlight that layer thumbnail, okay? And then I'm gonna make a new layer and put that, um, I'm gonna put that right on top of Lady for now. X to swap my foreground and background. B for my, pa my paint brush. I'm just gonna paint in here. You see how that immediately gives us a little bit of dimension. And don't worry if it gets a little bit too dark. You can always um, just change your mode from normal to clear. And then that will actually let you erase stuff using the paintbrush tool. It's one of my favorite little tricks there. And then I can just switch back to normal and continue to add some more shadow in here. And just like maybe a touch of shadow at the um, the bottom and left and maybe a touch of shadow up here, but not too much. And I can rename this shadow and I can deselect and then just reduce the opacity of the overall shadow layer until I'm happy with how it kind of blends in together. So that looks pretty good. All right, any questions so far, just type those into the chat and I'll be happy to help you out with it, okay? So now that we have our shadow, we have um, really three more layers that need to come in here. We need our little bit of shrapnel wood, we need our love songs, and we need our, um, our fence, so to speak. So let's bring those in. Let's go over to door. And in door, I'm actually going to um, like kind of cut this out before I bring it over, I think. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, I'll, eh, a little bit of both. So here's what we'll do. We'll take this door, we'll drag it over like that. Ooh, wrong file, wrong file. Let's go back to photo collage work. Click on this guy, drag it over, okay? And that's like freaking huge, okay? So let's take this guy and this is just going to be called door. Right click, convert to smart, and then I'm going to double click on it, okay? And double clicking on it, remember, opens that smart object as its own Photoshop file in, in essence. I'm going to zoom into this and I'm going to like fairly quickly select all the stuff around it, okay? So you could do this with the quick selection tool. Um, alternatively, you could do it with the quick mask tool, either or, really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna do the quick mask tool and B for brush, and that's too soft of a brush, so I'm just gonna right click, switch over to hard round, reduce, okay, and that quick mask mode, which you can get into and out of just by hitting the letter Q. And then I'm just painting with my paintbrush tool set to a hard round brush. And I'm just selecting maybe a little bit more than I would ordinarily. And I can always go back in and adjust. I can always hit X to swap foreground and background, and then I can paint this part back into the scene. See that? I can always use, remember, those bracket tools, the bracket keys, in order to change the size of my brush. But for now, I'm just going to 
paint like kind of a general area around of what I want to kind of keep and get rid of. And we can always go back into this later and make it more refined. That's one nice thing about the smart object workflow. There we go. All right. And then I want to select all the stuff around. Okay. Now, if any of you are getting confused or lost using the, the quick mask, you can literally use any um, selection tool you want. I just chose to use the quick mask. Um, I don't recommend the, uh, what's it called? The quick selection tool. It tends to give sort of uh, ragged edges, but here I can just hit X to swap foreground and background and hit the delete or backspace whenever I select an area that I know I want to get rid of. Delete or backspace. Let's select this little area here, delete this area here, delete, and so on. Okay, all right, brilliant. Okay, so that's all selected. I have a little schnibble here. I'm gonna hit delete on and then select, deselect. Just gonna zoom in here. And then I could with just a much smaller brush, B for brush, and then just using my little brackets to get it to be smaller. I can cut, whoops, hit X to swap foreground and background and then just come in here and paint this back away, right? Okay, great. I think that's good enough, at least for a first pass, because I don't even know if my client's gonna like this thing. And then I can um, hit Q again, and now that is my selected area. All right, and then I can, because this is a smart object, I can layer mask it right in here. And I can see that this actually made kind of a soft edge, which I'm not thrilled about, but there is a way if I do M for marquee and right click, there we go. You can go into um, further save selection, there's like a thing. Let me see, select and mask, is that the one? There we go. So with select and mask, you can choose how transparent you want your edge while you're working with it. Um, you can actually increase the contrast of your edge so it's sharper, which is really nice. You can shift the edge bigger or smaller, which is also a really nice thing. Um, and then, that's not showing my edge. Okay, so that's pretty good. I kind of like that. I don't hate it. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I can do my layer mask and see how it's suddenly sharper. So that's a nice thing that you can do in case if your selection area frankly sucks and you don't really have time to reselect everything. So again, that was just by um, uh, M for marquee, right clicking and choosing um, select and mask. I'm a big fan. Okay, so now I can save this. And when I go back to my photo collage work file, you're gonna see that that edge has really been cleaned up there. So I can transform this with a command or control T. I'm gonna zoom out a bit and I'm gonna make this smaller. Okay, and put that in here. Rotate it around. Remember, shift click, uh, sorry, shift drag with the rotation aspect to get it to snap to 15 degrees at a time. Oops, I actually screwed that up real quick. Here we go. So when you're using free transform in the more recent versions of Photoshop, you really shouldn't hold shift, otherwise you will experience distortion. So I'm just gonna move that up here so that we have something else on the third and that's gonna look pretty nice. And I'm gonna commit to that using this little checkbox up here. Let's check back at our original. And if I look at the wood section, this texture thing was at 71%. So we'll reduce the opacity, no big. I can just hit number seven. And I can um, adjust the size again with the command or control T. Okay, let's check out our thirds. So 
control or command semicolon will show you your thirds again. Then I can bring over my fence. So select all, copy, back to photo collage work. Let's save that before we bring in this next giant piece. And I'm just gonna do paste. And this is rather big. I'm gonna call it fence and smart object that as well. Now this smart object, I can put it on top of everything else. I had it on some serious blending here. So this guy, I did a drop shadow on it, sure, but I also set the blending to exclusion. So if I come up here and I change the blending to exclusion, it's pretty interesting. And if I hit seven on my keyboard with this guy selected, it really doesn't want to change, so we'll just do it here. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then I'm going to scale it. So Command or Control T with that selection tool chosen. And I want this to be small and I want it to be in the corner. Okay, now the difficulty with exclusion is that it's really going to show everything else through it. So that was the reason why I had all those funky layer masks all over the place. So I thought that this sort of angle worked pretty good here. We want there to be sp space for the love songs label. Whoa, this is so big, it's like freaking out. Let's move it over. And again, if you guys have questions as I'm doing this stuff, please, please, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm moving this down, rotate a little, little less, I guess, and then yeah, something like that. Fine. I'm going to commit to that knowing that I can always change it later on. And one thing that I can do is I can just use this data as my selection area. So if I change my opacity back to 100% just for now, and I hold the command or control key while I click on that edge, now it's selected that edge. Now, I don't want that edge to be visible in any of my other stuff. I want it to be like gone. So let's go over to our beach layer. I'm gonna select invert, inverse, and I'm going to layer mask that. So that makes that look a little bit clearer. Let's go back up here in number seven. See how like just removing that little bit of beach made this feel more clear overall? And then we can add like some drop shadows to these things. So this fence, I can add a drop shadow to it rather easily just by clicking on the little FX at the bottom, going to drop shadow. And I'm gonna direct the drop shadow so that it is, um, coming off of here. So this angle, it's different than when you're working in After Effects. The angle of this is the angle of your light. So if your light was coming from down, your shadow is going to be going the other way. Uh, and then you can increase your distance, which is the pixels of your shadow. I'm just zooming bigger using Command or Control Plus. And then you can increase the spread no, the spread's not working for me. Let's try the size. So the size is actually your softness. I wish they just called it softness, but they don't. So I've reduced, I've increased my size and I left the spread at around nine and then I can reduce the opacity of the shadow as well. Okay, and that looks kind of nice. It's maybe, um, not as accurate because this was painted here, but we're gonna be forgiving to ourselves and say, hey, no big deal. And we can do another drop shadow on this door layer. So I can go to the FX and I can do drop shadow once more. And on that one, I can adjust um, the size and make it less. Uh, I can decrease the distance and you probably want a similar amount of 
I don't know. You, you want it to look believable that it's part of the same space, okay? But at the same time, you also need to um, make it so that it stands out from the background. And there could be multiple sources of light in your scene or in your pretend scene that you're trying to uh, coalesce into one little air, you know, coalesce into one composition altogether, right? So this looks nice. I'm happy with that. And then I'm gonna bring in my label and that's really gonna be, I think the last layer involved here, right? Like, cause we put in our fence, we put in our hole, um, our paint is already part of it. Uh, the beach is done. We put the door in and finally we gotta put the tape. And I know it says tape, but it, we're really using it for the label. So I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna isolate just this label, okay? So um, what I could do is just use one of my best friend tools, the polygonal lasso. I like the polygonal lasso, especially when I'm working with collage type files because the polygonal lasso looks like I've cut the thing out using scissors. Um, and it's pretty forgiving. The more points you have with the polygonal lasso, the more roundness you'll be able to achieve with it, which is pretty nice. So I'm just doing something like that. And it's not perfect, but collage isn't really supposed to be perfect. I'm using, switching over to my hand tool just by holding the space bar down. And I'm just gonna shuffle off over here until I get back to my first points. Remember, if you accidentally double click, you can always hold the shift key and that will allow you to add more to your selection. You only have to hit the shift key once when you start drawing more points. Okay. Great, so now I have that selected and I can do a little layer mask, nice. Matter of fact, since I know that I'm not gonna need the rest of this, I could take my crop tool, make sure it's set to delete cropped pixels and just select that little section there, right? And then I can hit return or enter and then just drag that over, right? Just be like, floop, there you are. And that can go up on top because that's my label. I don't need this JPEG anymore because I did all my work to it already. So I can close it without saving, no big. And when I'm back in my photo collage work file, I can call this label and turn that whole thing into a smart object by right clicking the name of the layer. There's my smart object. So now I can take my selection tool, I can come over here and I can make this smaller. So Command or Control T. And because I cropped it and chose delete cropped pixels, now I'm not dealing with this large unwieldy file. I just have this nice little self-contained section, right? It's pretty good. I'm just gonna place that like right there. I can always change the size and whatnot later on. Yay. Now I quite like this drop shadow that was on this little bit of wood. I'm gonna copy it over to this label and I can do that quite simply, just holding the Alt or Option button and dragging that drop shadow up. And you see how it gave me like a double arrow with the FX, eh? Pretty nice. And I can release and now I have the same exact drop, exact drop shadow on both that piece of wood and on my label. Let's click back and take a look. And it looks like I did do some color adjustment to the sticker, as I called it here. Oh, I did color adjustment, but I didn't keep track of what it was. So let's just go in here and let's add um, image adjustments. Let's do a little hue and saturation love again. I'll do some colorization 
increase the satch, increase the lightness, adjust the hue so it's a bit orange. And that just kind of helps to make everything feel like it belongs together. Because the lady's kind of orange and the love songs are kind of orange and orange and blue are kind of complementary, so it really feels um, like we've got a color palette going on, right? So that's pretty good. I can make it a little bit lighter. And I would, of course, continue fussing with this. Um, I'd probably go into the door layer perhaps and because if you squint your eyes right now if you squint your eyes you'll see that the woman is standing out but she's also competing with that chunk of wood and she's competing with this bit of fence so that's not ideal so I'm gonna go into the fence and maybe do a little levels command or control L will bring up your levels and I could make that a touch lighter just by increasing the range of pixels that are distributed between black and gray. And I could even take that black point. Is it the black point? Nope, let's try the white point. Yeah, you can always try one thing and if it doesn't work, try the other, no judgment, right? So I'm gonna um, squint my eyes again, see that? It's like a real thing that I do. I squint my eyes at my work. Um, and I can see the lady is standing out and that wood is still just like yelling at me. So let's grab up the wood door and do a little levels adjust on that too. And let's pull that gray back a little bit and make that overall just kind of more washed out. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. And I can always add some hue to that, make that a little a bit of a different color by hitting Command U. All right, friends. This is pretty much done. We have gone a bit over in time, but this is like ready to save, if not ready to animate. Um, the next step in this whole process, of course, would be to show this to the client and be like, hey, is this what you had in mind? And they might say no. They might say, actually, can you use a different woman? Could you use different textures and so on? And I like to keep everything in this state until it gets approved by client and we have sign off and then i go back in and i would do certain things so for instance you'll notice that in the underscore anim version there are no smart objects we still have some layer masks but we don't have smart objects and so to make this smaller what i might do is just like my cheap trick to get things to not be smart objects anymore is to just create an empty layer underneath, select both, command or control E, and that merges the two together. Though sometimes that can cause um, some blending mode issues to happen. Alternatively, you can convert to layers and that just, yes, retain, transforms and smart objects applied. And see, that looks exactly the same, but it's significantly lighter for the computer to have to manage. So I would go through and I would convert each of the smart objects into layers once this thing is approved. And then I'd save it as a different file name in case if I need to go back to the original. I would also take each of my layer masks and turn them into separate layers so I could use those in After Effects whenever necessary. So for example, this woman, I want her to enter the frame, but I want this hole to be independent. So I would do some things there, but I'll do all that next time we meet, which is um, to say in the animation, uh, in the animation step for this particular collage. All right. Awesome. So if you haven't yet signed up for my newsletter, please do. There's a link down below um, in the description. And I hope you had fun. If you make something using these techniques, feel free to tag me on Instagram at KalikaFX or hashtag KalikaFX. Uh, do them both, I guess. Um, if you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up, um, maybe even subscribe. And if you have suggestions for future tutorials, please type those into the comments or into um, the chat, or you can drop me a note. Uh, 
through regular email. It's been really fun teaching you how to do digital collage in Photoshop. I hope you guys will make your own collages on your own and share those with me and share those with people and animate them. And I hope I'll see you soon when we learn how to animate this. Every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, I have another live stream, at least for now. And I hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you are. And please stay in touch. Great to see you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.